Hello, this is Tim Sandal back with you with another five minutes video. And in this video, we're going to focus a little bit more on microbiology. And in particular, we're going to have a look at human skin and the microbial ecology of the human skin. Now, skin might all look the same. In fact, made up of different niches, and these niches vary by moisture, temperature, salts, and so on. And our understanding of what is present on our human bodies has been advanced in recent years by genetic testing called metagenomics, and this has provided much more information. So we now know that our skin is not just the same, but in the different areas, and there's three primary ecological niches, we get difference in variation. We get different types of microorganisms recovered. And the three main areas are those areas that are moist, like the groin and between the toe webs. Those areas that are far more oily, as around the forehead and in the hair follicles. And then the main part of the body, which is much drier, the torso, the arms, the ends of our fingers, and so on. And pharmaceutical microbiologists are fascinated by the types of microorganisms that are recovered from human skin. And the most common organism recovered from human skin are the staphylococci. These are the most abundant skin colonizing bacteria. And one reason why they're so abundant is because they produce um, polymers and proteins that promote adhesion and aggregation. So they're always with us. And they also represent the most common type of bacteria that are shed from the skin. So as those thermal plumes around our body act and we're shedding out skin cells, then those rafts of skin matter are carrying a predominance of staphylococci. Now, the most common staphylococci that we recover, and there's an electron micrograph on the screen, is Staphylococcus epidermidis. So the name of this bacterium gives a clue because the name for the outer layer of human skin is the epidermidis. And this organism, this particular bacterium, is found in high association with sweat glands, which is why controlling temperature and humidity in clean rooms is of such great importance. This organism is also found around the mucous membranes, the various orifices and openings that are all over the human body. Now, in general, finding Staphylococcus epidermidis is a sign of human related weaknesses in aseptic practice. This could be the way we've gowned or it could be due to the hand sanitization techniques that we've practiced. Another type of organism, another type of Staphylococcus that you will have heard of is Staphylococcus aureus. And the reason this is um, spoken about is because it's of medical concern. And there's a picture of Staphylococcus aureus infection shown on the screen. And you also may have heard it because it's become resistant to a number of um, antibiotics, or at least certain strains have. And most commonly, a very common antibiotic that Staphylococcus aureus has become resistant to is methicillin, and hence we have MRSA. Now, why, while microbial resistance is something of societal concern, what we're most concerned about with Staphylococcus aureus is in terms of certain areas of the body and certain people, and also the existence of what we call wild types. So you'd be pleased I'm going to change the slide um, as we talk a little bit more about Staphylococcus aureus. Now, Staphylococcus aureus is found in association with 20% of the population. And it has this medical concern, as we've seen, because it has an enzyme that can coagulate blood, unlike the Staphylococcus epidermidis that we 
spoke about. But the other interesting thing about Staphylococcus aureus is that it's almost exclusively only recovered from the nose and in particular that part of the nose that's called the nares which is this area around the nostrils. So the recovery of Staphylococcus aureus is almost always a signal of poor mass control. And also if we find it from a finger plate then we're more likely to have used our gloved hand to have touched a part of our face and this may have caused a problem again with poor hand sanitization. There are also other staphylococci that also might signal particular um, weaknesses with areas of the human body. So for example if we find an organism called Staphylococcus auricularis then this is almost exclusively found in the ear canal. Another Staphylococcus, one called Staphylococcus capitis, is almost always found on top of the head, particularly with um, younger people. So the types of organisms that we're finding can offer some quite interesting clues, and particularly with Staphylococcus aureus. Now the other issue is with wild types. Now wild types are bacteria that say may have survived the cleaning and disinfection process, perhaps due to poor technique or due to insufficient contact time. And what happens is a small number survive and they adapt to the harsher conditions and then they become harder to kill. And these wild types can persist for long times with only minimum nutrients. And Staphylococcus aureus is one such organism that's recognised as being very adaptable to these wild type conditions. And the big danger is that it passes on this adaptability through various generations. And research that was published in 2020 shows that this greater survivability carries on through some 250 um, generations. So it remains that it's really important that we gown correctly, that we make sure that our face masks are secure and if we do happen to be a carrier of Staphylococcus aureus around our nares then we are keeping that in through good practices. And to stop these wild types then it's really important to carry on cleaning and disinfecting using the correct technique. We don't want survivors because they might form these hardier wild types and these become immeasurably harder for us to try and kill next time round. And all of this fits in with the one best way. So always keep that in mind. So thank you for your attention. I'm Tim Sandal and until next time, cheerio, goodbye and Enjoy the rest of your day.